Welcome to St. Francis Episcopal Church on this the last Sunday after Epiphany. It is February the 14th, 2021. And welcome to St. Francis Episcopal Church here in Greensboro, North Carolina. I am Father Milton Williams, the rector here at St. Francis. And on behalf of Father Matt Addington, our assistant priest, and every member of this congregation, I welcome you to worship this morning on this, the last Sunday in this season of Epiphany. If you are visiting with us, we invite you to complete a visitor's card that you can find on our website. Submit the card. It will then give us an opportunity to welcome you more completely into this wonderful congregation we love and call St. Francis. Yes, today is the last Sunday in this season of Epiphany. And on today, our message, our sermon time will be shared with us by Miss Felicia Cole, our Director of Children and Youth. Felicia will give us an introduction, a way of preparing ourselves as we will soon be in this season of Lent. Miss Felicia will help us to shift our mindset as we move from one season of Epiphany into this season of Lent. Related to the season of Lent, this coming Wednesday, we will worship together for our traditional Ash Wednesday service. So be mindful of that. Watch for that this coming Wednesday. And then the following Sunday will be the first Sunday in Lent. And we will begin that worship with the Great Litany. 
again. It is my great honor to worship you with you today and welcome you to this time where we gather in our, our hearts, our thoughts, our very souls, so that we would be prepared to have an experience with the living God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord, Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from 2 Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven, by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elijah were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elijah said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets were in Bethel 
came out to Elijah and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elijah, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elijah and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elijah said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing yet. If you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elijah kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into pieces. The word of the Lord.
reading from Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Here ends the reading. Good morning, St. Francis. Depending on who you are and which calendars you pay the most attention to, today could be a lot of different things to different people. So to make sure we have all of our bases covered right at the start, happy Valentine's Day, St. Francis. But also, happy last Sunday of the Epiphany season. But also, welcome to the last Sunday before the season of Lent is here. Do you see what I mean about a lot of potential angles for this Sunday? So let's go ahead and jump right in because as we promised, we are going to spend our last little bit of time together doing something new and experimental. But before we get to that, let's really focus in on what's happening in today's gospel reading because it's kind of a pretty important story. It's actually such an important story that our liturgical calendar asks us to talk about it twice a year. Now, I am going to take a super quick bet and assume that none of us have experienced a sight quite like the transfiguration of Jesus. So it understandably it may be hard for us to feel like we can really understand the impact that today's gospel has for us or the impact it had on the disciples who actually had a chance to witness it firsthand. Let me try to help by adding in a little extra context for us. I'm assuming these disciples were not in the most optimistic state of mind by the time Jesus invites them up on this mountain with him. Earlier in Mark, the disciples had actually been learning about some of the prices to pay for following Jesus, or in other words, they were hearing the real cost of discipleship. Another interesting note is that the transfiguration of Jesus is also sandwiched between the first and second warnings of Jesus' ultimate betrayal and death. So again, I would not be shocked to hear that the disciples were possibly really in their heads about everything they had been learning, and maybe they were even depressed or pessimistic about the journey that lied ahead of them. But then Jesus invites this inner circle of disciples to the top of the mountain with him. Peter, James, and John are following Jesus up this mountain, probably assuming they are going to hear more of Jesus' teachings, and boy were they, because once they find themselves on top of this mountain, Jesus completely transforms right in front of their eyes. Elijah and Moses appear, and Jesus is suddenly dressed in this incredible, supernatural, unearthly white. Also, in case you're wondering why exactly it's Moses and Elijah that appear with Jesus, don't worry, I had the same question for a while, and I believe the answer is important. Elijah and Moses were these hugely significant figures in the Old Testament. So by them appearing alongside Jesus and with Jesus, we were getting the final answer that Jesus truly was a separate figure from Elijah and from Moses. Jesus was showing these disciples that he is the climax point of God's plan for us. 
So as if this whole transfiguration thing wasn't quite enough evidence for Jesus and his friends, next we read that there was confirmation from God their self. The scripture says, And then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. God told these disciples, and through them God is telling us, that Jesus truly is the Son of God and that we are supposed to listen to him. Earlier in Mark, we read that Jesus is warning his friends about the storms coming their way. But through the transfiguration, Jesus shows us how truly glorious, supernatural, and powerful he is. Jesus was telling his friends, yes, a storm is coming. Things are going to get rough. A storm is coming. But the waves and the wind know my name. It's almost as if Jesus was giving the disciples just a taste of the incredible acts they would soon be witnessing. So speaking of those incredible acts, as I mentioned earlier, not only is today the last Sunday of the Epiphany season, but it is the last Sunday before the season of Lent begins. Yes, it is time again for us to enter into a season where we are regularly faced with the contemplation and weight of death or pain. I constantly wonder how to make these stories palatable for small Sunday school ears. We collectively, as a community, decide to make our way down the dusty road to Jerusalem, knowing that there is going to be death at the end. And I can't help but wonder how many of us are feeling like this year's Lent in particular may be a little more difficult than usual, or feel a little heavier. We are coming up on a year of being in a pandemic or some form of quarantine. We have seen a systematic oppression come to a head in the course of a year. We were watching the news during the 2020 election cycle. We have grieved for events and we have grieved for human lives. I mean, do not get me wrong, I completely understand not every day can feel like Easter and death has to come before resurrection, but still, it feels like 2020 and now 2021 are just adding too much emotional baggage for one person to carry. But friends, if the idea of Lent is feeling too overwhelming, this year especially, may I invite you to join me in redirecting our thinking a little bit. What if we use the transfiguration of Jesus as the ultimate example and hope of our own spiritual transformations during Lent? What if we can find a way for our own spiritual resurrections to take place? Friends, we are not created to carry this emotional baggage on our own. And that fact alone is a beautiful invitation to transform and let some of that baggage go. The journey to resurrection is real. The opportunity is very clearly laid out for us, but it requires hard work. Transformation and change require vulnerability. They require walking away from some of these really heavy things we have been carrying day to day. This journey we are about to embark on together is the ultimate reminder that new life cannot come forward until death had a say. So that leaves the big question. Which parts of our hearts need to be resurrected? And this is where things are going to get interesting, and I'm going to invite all of you to be a little open-minded with me. So as we enter into this year's Lent on still a mostly virtual platform, I wanted to try something that we do in Sunday school sometimes, but I think the whole parish could maybe benefit a taste of it. I recently discovered Lily Lewin, who works out of Nashville, and she has so many incredible ideas on experiential worship and how to really engage all of our senses while we're worshiping together. So I thought a little taste of some experiential worship might just be the perfect way for us to virtually explore our hearts together as we enter Lent. So 
we, we, were, we sent out a list this week with some of the basic supplies that I have right here with me that I'm going to walk us through. If you don't have these supplies, that is completely fine. Please join me as we go through these together. So the first thing I invite you to do, if you have a candle nearby, is to simply light it. And that is going to represent the light of God and the light of Christ. And I think it also just kind of helps us all feel like we're a little bit together if we all kind of have our own candles going. And next, if you have a sponge with you, I invite you to pick up your sponge and just feel it. Just, you know, press it. It has that spongy feeling. You know how a sponge feels. So I want you to just take a second while you're holding this, while you're kind of feeling it, and I want you to really evaluate where you think your humanity might be. Like, how are you doing just as a human being? Do you feel like a new ready-to-go sponge that's like spry and it's ready to go? Or do you maybe feel like that sponge that's been sitting in your kitchen sink for a month too long and it's ready to be replaced? We've all done it. It's okay. I'm wondering which sponge do you feel more like, this new fresh one or that old kind of moldy one resting in your sink? Next, I invite you to pick up your rock and feel it, feel how heavy it is, kind of toss it back and forth if you want. And while you're holding this rock, I want you to think of what parts of your heart feel hard or maybe they feel kind of rough, like a rock feels. Maybe these parts of you in your heart used to feel moldable or soft, but now they're just hard and different. Next, I invite you to pick up some lint. This is lint from my personal dryer. And you know, lint, it feels like lint. It's not the best feeling in the world. But I'm wondering, what are some things in your life that are kind of just clinging to you the way that lint does? What are parts of your heart that you maybe wish you could just roll right off of you and get off? What things in your life feel like they are just stuck to you and you just wish you could roll them off and get them over with? And then next, I invite you to pick up a lint roller if you have one. And I'm wondering, what things in your life are you ready to just hand over to God? What baggage do you wish Jesus was here to just roll right off of you? And after that, I invite you, if you have honey nearby, to take a taste of your honey. And while you are tasting honey, and like I said, even if you don't have honey around, that is totally okay. Just think of the taste of honey. And while we're tasting it and we're kind of thinking about it, I invite you to taste how sweet that is. It's almost like a hopeful or a joyful kind of taste, right? So I'm wondering what parts of your heart do you wish would flow more like honey? Or what sweetness do you want Jesus to add to your life or to add back into your life? Friends, as we see in the transfiguration of Jesus, the glory of Jesus has been shown to us. And now... It is our job to listen. It is now our time to journey into this 40-day season together with the hope of our resurrections to come. Some of us have spent the past year building walls around ourselves, around our beliefs, around our opinions, around our countries, and around our hearts. My prayer in this Lenten season is that you will give yourself permission to start breaking some of those walls down or build a gate in some of those walls at the very least. I invite you to allow yourself to be changed. I invite you to climb your own mountains with Jesus and witness the glory of God on them. I invite you to rest in the reminder that death does not have the final say and instead allows for change and resurrection. Christ is still standing right there on holy ground, even in the midst of all this uncertainty and all of this fear. I pray this next liturgical season we're entering is truly a source of renewal for us, allowing the incredible light of God into every part of our hearts 
especially the dark places. And with that, we thank Jesus for offering our ultimate source of light and hope as we take it with us today. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please respond to the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, with Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Lord, in your mercy. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Lord, in your mercy. Give to the departed eternal rest Let light perpetual shine upon them, Lord, in your mercy. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy, 
May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom, Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help, for you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds and bring our gifts unto God. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. And now let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Please know that your continued financial gifts are important to sustain the life and ministry of St. Francis, especially during these challenging times, and we are grateful to you. Thank you for giving. <laughs> 